Hello fellow orchid lovers, it's Danielle here with an update on my Vandacious type orchids. I realize that some of these are not technically Vandas, but um, they're kind of in a similar growth pattern or type, and so I've decided to include them all in one video. Um, so I'm just going to go through them really quickly and update you on what I have and how they're doing. So some of them, I wasn't really able to find an actual purchase date. Um, I was able to go back in my notes and they existed in my collection in early 2017. So <laughs> that's what we're going to assume they came into my care because they were in my notes that far back. So, um, you know, I'll try to give you dates where I can. And then unfortunately, I didn't keep really good records when I first started growing. So there are some dates that are missing. Uh, we'll start on the small ones and we'll start with the most pitiful and practically dead one. This is my Vanda Mimi Palmer seedling that I got in 2020. I'm not exactly sure what month 2020, but um, she's not she's not really alive anymore. So she was a, a, a seedling. She developed this cakey. The main seedling died and now the cakey is dying. So this is probably the last video that she is going to appear in. Unfortunately, I don't know what happened. I don't know why she died. I don't, she was great. She was doing fine. And then all of a sudden she wasn't. And I don't know. So yeah, unfortunately, uh, that's, that's about it. And I am disappointed because the Mimi Palmer is um, one of the Vandas that I would love to have in my collection. But unfortunately, I mean, she's, she was tiny. She was a seedling. I wasn't going to see blooms from her in a very long time. But, you know, it's disappointing when something doesn't go well. So we're just going to get her out of the way and stop talking about her and instead move on. <laughs> so um, this is my um, Rhynchostylus Celestis. And this is also a seedling, but this is a seedling that I've had as a seedling for years now. It's not really doing a whole lot. It never really progresses and gets bigger. So, um, I don't know. I've put her in higher light. I've put her in lower light. I've done lower water levels. I've done higher water levels. Her roots have grown. They haven't really died back, but she hasn't really done anything for me. So I'm, I'm kind of scratching my head about this one. Um, I got her back in 2017, so, you know, it's 2022, get with it, plant, but she is still alive, and she continues to put out new growth, and so I'm just keeping her in my collection and watering her every week and not really knowing why she's not progressing past the seedling stage, not sure, and again, I've tried more light, less light, more feed, less feed. I've tried everything with her and she's just not really progressing. So I don't know. You're going to find that a lot in this, this particular video. I don't know. <laughs> so let's just move on to another, I don't know, which is this one. We're going to skip the falcata for now. This is my lilac blossom. I have had her since 2019. May of 2019. She didn't do good for a really long time. Her root system was very poor. Recently, her root system has improved drastically. And her growth has improved drastically. And she's starting to get those little purple dots that mean happy, at least in my opinion, that she's getting the right kind of light, but still no blooming. So I'm not really sure on her either. Um, she does occasionally get this. And I'm not really sure what this is. If you hear noise, it's my husband. He's shoveling. We live in the mountains. We get snow almost every night. So he's out there getting rid of the snow that we got last night. Um, yeah, so she, she gets this. I have started to let her dry out during the week. Um, it seems to be keeping her root system alive and viable. So I think maybe she kind of doesn't need to be wet all the time, like I was thinking she did, but still no spikes. And I know she has, whoo, good catch, Danny. Um, I know she has bloomed before because I don't know if they're still here, but she did, when I got her back in 2019, she did have old remnants of spikes. So I know she's capable of blooming. She's the right size to bloom. But up until now, I haven't been able to make her happy enough to bloom. 
but things have changed since we moved here. Since we've moved here, she has grown a root system and she is growing leaves that are longer and have the, the right color to them. So you see how it has like those speckles. So hopefully this is moving in the right direction and she will no longer be a I don't know and instead will be a look she has blooms. So that's her. So now we'll move on to two more I don't knows. So these are my Gigantias. This is the red one and then this is the pink spot. Both of these plants bloomed in my old environment. In my old house with less light, they bloomed. They have not bloomed since we moved here and I don't know why. <laughs> um, I have had some dieback on the root system because of the algae. Um, I have found that my Vandaceous and my chunky rooted plants do not care for the algae on their roots. And unfortunately, I have a lot more light here and there is no chlorine in the water. And so the algae kind of was having a field day. I have since um, put masks on a lot of my um, vases to try to cut down on the light levels on the roots. I've also started adding um, a barley extract liquid to the actual water to try to cut down on the algae that way. But as far as growth is concerned, I mean, they're really, they're growing really well. Like their structures are very healthy, well hydrated, um, healthy structures, but they're not blooming. And I'm not really sure why. Now, technically, the blooming season for these two is, I believe, early to mid-spring. So we may not see spikes on them for a little bit. Um, but I've been here in this house for two years and no spikes in the two years that we've been here. But they did spike at my own old house. So that's a little bit of a head scratcher. Um, so I'm not really sure why. But... The plant itself seems pretty health, healthy and happy. So I did recently move them in much brighter light. I kind of had them set back a little bit from the window because when I first moved them here, I did kind of put them in too bright of light and I did burn some of the older leaves, which may have set them back. So I did um, move them back from the light, but I think maybe, you know, they need a little more than I'm giving them. So I did move them in a slightly better light. So hopefully that will improve. So I'll update you if anything does come of it. I, I'm hoping perhaps I might get blooms this spring. So two of three of the ones that are doing well that I'm this I'm not scratching my head are these three. So the first one is my falcata. This is the pink variety um, of the falcata, and it has bloomed for me several times now. So in my old, I've had this particular plant also since two at least. 2017 that's how far back my notes on this one goes um it has now bloomed for me several times it did not bloom in my old environment but it has bloomed here and it does keep growing fans I believe this was a single fan when I purchased it and it has got, grown several fans and it, it is continuing to grow fans and then also I see signs of oops sorry very blurry more spikes coming so we should have some more blooms on this soon. A uh, pretty extensive root system. With the falcata, I, I do give a slightly drier winter than I have been in the past, and I think that might be the reason why it's been blooming so continuously. I didn't realize that they like a drier, not like a completely dry, but they like a drier winter, and so that's what I've been doing. So instead of having the water up higher, I, I soak the roots once a week and then I drop the, le the levels down pretty far. Again, the algae, I do try to keep a handle on it for this plant because it doesn't love algae on its roots. But as you can see, overall the root system is in pretty good shape. Um, my curvy folium, this is actually a relatively new plant to my care. I got this when we moved here in uh, July of 2020 and it did bloom for me this year. So, well, actually last year, because um, we're in a new year now. So it did actually put out a spike and bloom for me. Some of you may remember this. I did feature the spike in one of my videos. She gets really good light. As you can see, she does have the little purple spots on her. Um, she does seem to prefer the higher light. I also give her a drier winter. So 
once a week, I, I fill her water up to the top and then I completely drain the water off. Um, I have since last time, last watering, I do actually leave a little bit of water in the bottom, but she has a really great root system as you can see. Really healthy and her growths are really healthy and she continues to put out new, um, new structures and I'm hoping she might possibly bloom for me again this year. So we'll look forward to that together. And then finally, my crown jewel, <laughs> my beautiful Vanda. So this is Vanda Sensei Blue. I have had this plant again since 2017. I do actually have a date on this one. I got her in May of 2017. Now she literally started blooming for me this year. Well, not this year, because again, I keep forgetting. We are in 2022. So 2021, she finally started blooming for me. So I got her in May of 2017, and she didn't start blooming for me until I believe it was the summer of 2021. So it took a long time to get this plant to the point where she was happy enough to bloom, but she has put out three spikes since then, and there would have been a fourth, but for some reason, um, she did actually reabsorb one of the four spikes. Uh, so the plant itself is doing really, really good. Lots and lots of growth. As you can see, she has those, that, that freckling on her newest leaves, which indicate to me that she's getting the correct amount of light. The root system is insane. Actually, to the point that once this spike comes off, I'm going to have to put her in a different pot because the, it's getting her in and out to clean her roots. It's so hard because she's just, she's literally like pressing up against the sides of the glass. So I'm going to have to uh, get her out of there. Now I do have the mask on her because she is one of those plants that if you do not clean her roots every week, she will, she, she will, her roots will die. Like the algae will absolutely kill her roots. She is very, very picky about the algae. And so I have to clean her roots every week. So to cut down on the amount of algae that actually forms on her roots, I did put this black mask on here to try to cut down on the light. It does seem to help. As you can see, she does have quite a bit of roots, a pretty extensive root system. She's nice and firm in the pot. And she has this beautiful spike. So we are enjoying these blooms quite a bit. They really do have, I mean, they're slightly purple, but they do have a blue sheen to them. So really, really cool color. Huge, huge blooms. No fragrance, but the color is perfect. So that's how my Vandacious types are doing. If you want more specifics on any one of these plants, um, please let me know. Otherwise, I will talk to you all next time.